Um, before I, I start with the, the demo, I, I want to show one slide. So I have seen a slide here. Um, to, to give a bit of context about how a typical project um, is usually performed. Uh, and so basically, in a very simple form, there are four phases. And the first phase is, um, it's very important that you start the, the process mining analysis with uh, a number of questions in mind or uh, some knowledge about the business problems that should be addressed. Otherwise, you can get easily lost and um, go in all kinds of directions, so that's important. Um, to deliver value but also for focus of the analysis. So there would be um, the discussion about what is the process scope, what are the problems that, that, that should be solved, the questions that should be answered. And then uh, in the second phase, the data will be extracted from the IT systems. And for example, if I'm, I'm, going, uh, I'm working with someone in a project, I'm, I'm typically not doing this myself, but then uh, I have to communicate with the IT, uh, IT staff of, of that company and they will extract the data for me, but it's my responsibility to tell them what kind of data uh, I need and what kind of data is needed for process mining. So this is the same for you if, if you're performing process mining projects. And then only the third phase, um, the actual data analysis comes in place and it's not always as linear as it uh, seems here, but there are iterations and loopbacks and so on. So the data that I'm using here today is, is actual, is, is real data. It comes from a refund process of a, of a manufacturer, electronic manufacturer. I uh, an anonymized it and I removed a lot of data attributes uh, so that this, the company cannot be identified in, in that form. I have permission to use it in that form. And I think it's nice to see a real example to, to get an impression of how the data really can, can look like that you might get. Um, so before I start, I show the data um, just in Excel to see how it looks like. So initially there were all kinds of extra columns and we just kept the essential columns here for the demo. Um, and basically in this, in this uh, CSV file, every row is one event or one activity that took place. And you see these three essential columns uh, that are necessary for process mining. So a case ID, um, in this case some kind of order number, um, an activity name about the process step that was performed, um, and then we need at least one timestamp. If we have two timestamps, that would be better because then we could differentiate the active times of someone actually working on an activity uh, from the inactive times where there's just idle time and nothing happens in the process. In this case, we don't have that. We just have basically status changes, so milestones that are reached in the process. And in this case here, this was uh, an attribute that uh, I had to anonymize as well it was a comment activity. So the, often there's like just free text comments, which can be very useful for uh, for when you drill down to the in individual cases to understand what's going on. Um, one attribute I could keep, and this is um, a channel attribute, which indicates where the refund basically came in. So customers can either call up the call center um, to issue a refund. Uh, they can start the process through the internet, and then it's a somewhat different category. Um, also, dealers like, for example, Media Markt or other um, companies, they have a similar process in place, and then it's not the end customer, but like a company to company level. So um, this is the data set. The problem in this process was that um, the people who were responsible for the process had um, the feeling that something wasn't right. They, they got complaints from customers, so that's a, a clear signal, and they looked into individual cases, um, individual data samples, and, and found things that were incorrect. But they had no idea of how representative is this? Is this a real problem? Uh, so there was more, it was more like a hunch, like a feeling, and they were looking to get objective, an objective picture of what's going on and what, what are the problems. Uh, so we're quickly looking at, at a few things, and we're starting really from scratch. So I'm using uh, Flexicon's new process mining tool Disco here for the demo. Um, the first step in any process mining tool, if you want to start the analysis, you import the, um, the data set. So here I just open the file that we looked at in Excel um, and I open it. And then there's the first initial configuration step where I basically have to um, 
yeah, configure these three minimum requirements that I just mentioned. We have to know which, uh, what is my case ID, um, which is like really differentiating the different instances in the process, uh, the timestamp, what is my activity. So once I've done that, I can import the data. Um, and I do that here. Well, so that's the first picture. It's um, quite complex. Um, it's the first picture of, of this process. And um, so what we see here is really the process flow. Uh, I zoom in a little bit so you can see what we are actually looking at. At the beginning, at the top here, this is the start of the process. We see that there are 1,338 cases. It's quite, it's quite a small data set, actually, if you look at it like that. All of them started with order created with this activity, and then the process um, is splitting uh, in d into different directions. Uh, and actually here we can already see one of the problems. So there is one very frequent activity that shouldn't occur at all, actually, namely um, that additional missing documents need to be requested again. So this is a follow-up. It's like a waste, uh, wasteful step that, that, that should be prevented in the first place, but it seems to happen almost in a regular way rather than that it's an exceptional case that happens every now and then. Okay, so um, one thing that you may notice here is that, well, it's kind of still readable, but it's actually for for someone who wants to look at a process and understand it, it's still quite complex and complicated. And um, this is something you will notice for many processes that you, um, when you analyze them the first time, that the first picture you get is is often is quite complicated. And what I want to show you now in the remaining uh, 15 minutes is a few strategies to break this down. We have a, have heard a few things already. Cleaning up is um, one important aspect, but also divide and conquer is a, is a good strategy and a very useful strategy to, um, to get process models that are more meaningful and also more useful for, uh, for out of the analysis. And we'll take a, take a look at that here. Uh, at the same time, Dealing with these kind of complex processes is something um, that we can deal with here also by simply uh, determining the level of detail we want to see or we still find useful to see. For example, if I move the slider here to the bottom, then I would just see the main, this is just the main variant of the process here, which we see, okay, again, this missing documents requested, that shouldn't be there. Uh, and then actually the process stops, which is another insight. It tells us that we have incomplete uh, cases in our data set. We have processes that at the time of data extraction were still running. Uh, so they haven't com haven't completed yet, and this is something we we should take care of in the data um, uh, in the data uh, cleanup um, step afterwards. Uh, and then actually, what we see here is only still the the main flow of the process. So it's showing um, the main uh, the main uh, process flows. I could even pull this up even more, and then I would see more detail and it would get more and more unreadable until a point where I really don't don't want to read this anymore. Uh, so for example 50% here. So this is it's not useful anymore. So it's it's very important to be able um, to simplify, to, to still see what the main flows process is. But also this is then now for us a next step to see okay how can we how can we now work with the data uh, to answer our questions. Um, so before we do that, though, before we do the cleanup, let's look at some other perspectives also at the, at the, of the log data. Um, so we can look at, for example, statistics just to get a sense. Uh, that's also something I would do to, to get a sense of what is this kind of data about. So I can see here, for example, like before, we have about 9,000 cases. It's um, uh, events in this case, only 1,300 cases. And we see that it's also a very relatively short time period that we are looking at. Only two months of data from um, yeah, 27th of November till 27th of uh, January. And here we can see the weeks, huh? the weeks and the days actually in, the, in this pattern. Um, but then, for example, if we look at the case duration, which is the time really from the beginning of the process until the very end, the last, between the first and the last timestamp, uh, we see a few cases that are really, well, quite long. They, they almost take two months. So there's some here, for example, um, seven cases that take, uh, you know, around 53 days, which is almost two months. So this shows us 
um, also that actually the time window that we have extracted from the data is actually too short and we should probably in a follow-up step try to get half a year or at least yeah for four months or something like this. Um, well, yes, we can also look at uh, further statistics here about the attributes or the, the people who are involved to get a sense like who are, what are the dominant um, activities, for example. And for example, any, any data attribute that I have, uh, I, can, I, I can also look at the statistics here in TIC, for example, that the, the customer cases are much more, fewer than, than the, uh, the, the business to business uh, orders there. And the last uh, view is that we look at the detailed level, really, <coughs> some of the example cases. We can look at the history. So, here, for example, we see the history for one, really, one order, the case 1244, four, running through uh, a number of steps. Um, and we can also look at certain variants. For example, here we, we find again this uh, insight that we saw already on the process map that actually the most uh, frequent variant and the variant is a sequence of activities so cases that follow the same sequence of activities the same path from start to end to the process uh, we see that 166 of them just stopped after this missing documents requested step um, and are basically there and it's not very um, useful for us to analyze for, for us to analyze the whole process um, Okay, so after getting like a, an overview, uh, the next step would be to focus on um, getting a complete process if we're looking into the, the regular process from, from start to end. Uh, and actually, if we look at this a bit more, I zoom in a bit at the bottom, we see that there are different endpoints of this process. So here, there's one part um, that ends at the warehouse, so some, some product is perhaps it's returned or something and it somehow prepared in the warehouse. Then there's like order completed uh, and there's another pass, for example, here it's um, the process ends with cancellation. So there's a cancellation that took place. Now I decide that I want to focus on the regular process on, and I want to focus on the end customer process So um, because that's where the problem is. If this is a service process and the customer is uh, so annoyed that they call up and that they complain, this is really bad for the for the reputation of the company, and um, they they need to they need to solve this problem. So what I want to do is I focus on just those cases that are com that uh, end here in this with this step order completed. Uh, so when we do that. Um, we can, in this case, uh, so there are filtering tools, so process mining, uh, or process mining tools have filtering tools to do that, so um, order completed. So here I can, for example, define, I only want to keep those cases that start with order created and that finish with this step order uh, created and completed, yeah. So when I do this now, then I get only a subset of, of the process namely now these 333 uh, cases that run uh, through. Um, and what I can also then say, okay, actually I want to focus on the normal process because um, that's the, the process that I want to uh, improve. <coughs> and I don't want to see, um, well, what is it? I don't want to see rejections, <coughs> for example. Um, so I, I could also say, okay, I want to get rid of those as well. Um, and I could add a f another filter for that to say, okay, I don't want to see, so I say <coughs> forbidden, I, I want to throw away cases that have anything with uh, here rejected, so that were rejected. I only want to get those that were approved and where actually p customers would get money back as, as part of this refund process. Um, and that's um, here, I think, so. So if it contains any of those, we don't want to see it. Um, and if we if we look at our process now, uh, at the bottom, we can still see that actually, uh, from a customer perspective, I'm if I'm an unhappy customer and I submit um, my complaint or this this kind of refund, I start this refund issue, then for me the process is completed when I get my money back. 
and not when the company is doing anything afterwards. So if I'm interested in, and I want to analyze also how long this time takes, this is in this case, uh, it's either payment issued or it's refund issued. Uh, but it's not product ready for scrapping, product scrapped, order completed. So these are internal steps from the company where I can say, okay, in this case, now I want to focus, I don't, I don't want to focus on them, but I'm throwing them away. So I can also do this and just, um, I think product scrapped, what was it, now I have to find them back. Uh, ready for scrapping, scrapped, and I think order completed. So we were only wanted to look until the, the payment process. Okay, now I make a, just to remember like a copy, this is like my end customer process. And I keep this as a bookmark. And now I can look at the, the throughput times, for example. And I can say, well, if I look at the case duration, this is now really the duration from when the customer submits um, the, 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 the request until they have the money back for those um, that followed this path. And we can see some of them, well, they were finished up to 13 days, uh, here 15 days, but some up to 47 days. So, so let's assume in the process we have a service level agreement where people say, okay, I, um, it's, it should be finished after 14 days. This process should not take longer than 40 days. That's our, um, our desire for this service process for our customers. So what we can do now is also to check and just uh, look at, okay, f how many take longer and how many take actually uh, less than that. And we use a performance filter um, to set this target and we say, okay, 14 days, um, well, let's say let's say 15 days. So 15 days is about a third, only a third of the cases meet our service level target. This is actually what, what we learn here just by, by doing this. Um, but we want to compare them also to, we want to look at the process to see whether there are any things that we can learn from those that are faster compared to those that take longer. So I again um, make a bookmark here for myself and I say, okay, uh, do meet um, SLA. And I do the same for those that take longer. Um, just here, let's say, yeah, 16 days or so. Um, and those definitely do not need SLA. So I create that. And now I, I of course want to go back to the to the process map. Uh, and I do that here. I can switch back and forth. Uh, and I want to look at the time perspective, not how the processes are flowing, where the, the process flow is passing through, but where I'm really losing my time. And therefore I'm switching to the performance perspective here, um, where um, if we look at the other one first, like those that do not meet the, uh, the uh, SLA, where actually do they lose the time? And it's, if we look at that, it's very visible here. Uh, we can look at the whole process, zooming a bit back and forth. Um, that here in this case, that's the culprit. Huh? And, and in, in this uh, visualization that we have here in, in the first view, we see a total time that is accumulated. So it's over all the cases that went of the whole lock uh, to see the high impact areas um, that, that, that are for, for possible improvements. Um, if we look at the mean duration, then we see, for example, that on average it takes 14 days actually for this shipment forwarding company uh, to to forward the product in such a way that then the refund process can be initiated. So this is uh, this is a, a clearly a bottleneck here. Um, and there can be all kinds of reasons for that, for this external service provider to do that. Maybe they're collecting the products and then sending them together once they have enough of them or something. But this is clearly not in line with our objectives of uh, delivering good customer service and meeting our SLAs towards our customers. Um, and if we then uh, compare this with the ones that do meet the SLA and actually look at the frequencies here, um, then we would see, um, where is it? Yes, actually we would see, uh, well, 
that less of them are going through this forwarding company compared to the other ones and that it also doesn't take that long so maybe they're the ones that are lucky that it didn't didn't take so long but here most of them in this set in this process where I'm um, I'm, I'm losing so much time they go through this particular part of the process. Um, now what we can also do is then in, to communicate this uh, and Christian showed the animation already uh, today so I briefly showed as well so we can also see this if we look at this uh, here and it's quite effective in communicating with um, people who are working in this process but who are not necessarily process experts or process um, improvement experts so if we zoom to that part um, then here we can see how how things pile up and sometimes uh, in, depending on the process it becomes really visible and you can clearly see how um, yeah how the work is piled up in one specific place and the queue is just stuck there and uh, the rest of the process is moving much faster okay so well it took I could show many more things there like what we heard before also in the talks there are compliance issues that can be checked you can check for segregation of duties for whether certain business rules uh, have been adhered you can compare uh, different product categories one thing I wanted to show but I didn't uh, get to was we can compare for example the channel uh, whether the, the, the complaint was handled in through the uh, call center or through the the internet so you can compare processes that based on the channel they came into um, and this can give some um, also interesting insights but for now uh, I thank you for your attention and I want to pass over to Wilfenau